Hello, folks. We're live with most of the panel. Some people are having some trouble um, for whatever reason. I don't think it's from my end. Uh, some people told me they weren't too, um, to say, uh, using Google Hangouts. Now, we have Stella Artois tonight. And uh, who would like to tell the viewers about Stella Artois? And we have uh, Tanya from California, Beer Cub and Michelle from Wyoming, myself from Louisiana, Brandon from Mississippi, Jeff Brister from Mississippi, hey guys. Bry Bryson from Minnesota. We've got uh, Nate from Massachusetts. We might be getting Eric from Massachusetts and John from Indiana, but I don't know. They, they might have gotten confused about doing their own video call. Um, and then we got Patrick, where Patrick's not able to uh, communicate with us at this time, and neither is John. Who wants to tell the audience about? <laughs> who wants to tell the audience about uh, Stella Artois? Well, it looks like it's brewed by InBev Belgium. What I see on Rate Beer. That's correct. It is 5.2 percent alcohol by volume. Five percent, right? Okay. It says 5.2% on rate, or rate beer. Sometimes they got wrong information, though. Oh, okay. Uh, um, my pre I was presuming it was 5%, but we can check on that. Um, I think it was 5 and then in Great Britain they lowered it to 4.8 uh, because of some uh, concerns about alcoholism and uh, violence. And plus they raised the, uh, and because of that, they raised the attacks on alcohol. Anything above 4.9 was, like, really expensive, so... All the companies hurried up and made their beers drop to 4.8, 4 4.9. Finally, guys, we get a hint. Yeah, well, hey! we, we invited you 10 minutes ago, but uh, 12, 12, 13 minutes ago. We have been, me and Eric's been trying to get in like crap. It's like to send a call. <laughs> go grab my beer. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you, Stella Artois was introduced in 1926 hmm. and uh, it was a Christmas special and then it was so popular that they decided to keep it as a regular um, beer. Now this company goes back to, not the company, but the brewery goes back to 1366. Now that's a long time ago and then I think it was in 1706 that a man named Sebastian Artois bought the company, okay? So oh, cool. it was the, the Artois family, and, it, and, and they made Stella Artois, which means Artois Star. And uh, it now it, be, it became their premier beer, you know, like their, their flagship. And then they were acquired eventually by Interbrew, which is now InBev, Anheuser-Busch InBev, okay? Um, it is sold in bottles, cans, and on draft. I have a can. 14.9 ounce can. I bought a single of it at racetrack. It was about two dollars and uh, I think twelve cents. So they don't they don't sell it at a low price point. I think it was eight ninety nine for my six pack. I give a dollar seventy nine for a single. And what size do you have, John? Twelve ounces. No, uh, eleven point two fluid ounces. Oh, that's no good. That's uh, that is no good. Um, Y'all ever see those big bombers up there, those 24-ounce bombers? No, we can't get those here. It's 11.2 or nothing. Oh, yeah, we get the big bombers and the cans. Now, Bryson, what are you drinking? Uh, I got the one pint, or the I think the bomber that you were talking about. Yeah, uh, big one here. Oh, nice. And yeah, and it's not skunked. It's not skunked. Mm. Yeah. Not skunked here either. Of course, they sell it in the green bottle, which is always a question of skunk. But uh, like, uh, you know, Jim Riel Trail, Stuart Picard, he's very right about this. He says if you pour a, a beer that's skunked and you let it set for about a minute, that'll dissipate almost every time. Uh, you know, if you, if, you get a, if you think you got a skunked beer and you turn that bottle upside down and you turn it right back up, the skunkiness goes away. I, wow, I never heard that. I've never heard that either. Yeah. 
Eric, hello. That's old school, guys. Here. Eric, we invited you a good while back, but for some reason you couldn't get in, but we're glad to have you. I knew you'd jump in. Welcome um, to Google Plus and its nice intricacies. Yeah. <laughs> don't say too much because I'll, I'll get banned. Hey, Eric, good call to you a Yo, yeah, yo. I got this chalice glass, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, oh, official. Let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, I wanna... Now, that was very... I want to thank... I want to thank... Um, uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev's distributor in the New Orleans area for the kind donation of the two Stella Artois glasses to me, myself, and I. Here. So you know I'm going to brag on this beer and how wonderful it is. Um, <coughs> Eric's, uh, Eric says, pardon my freaking out. That's okay, Eric. I would have flipped <laughs> out if I couldn't have got in. We all... No, um, he was no. so happy with his glass. He wanted to show us. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. got in. They can't buy me. They gave me two free glasses with the beautiful gold rim top and the beautiful neck, but they can't buy me off, even though it doesn't hurt. Now, um, Beer Cub and Michelle, what are y'all drinking now? Though? Yeah, we got the 14.9 ounce cans. Uh, got four of those for six bucks. That was a pretty good price. And, uh, How much? Six bucks for four cans. Oh wow, that is good. Yeah. Now, the cans you don't have to worry about the skunk, do you? Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, what do y'all what do y'all get on the look? I've got a lot of good lacing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I didn't get much in, but I, I mean, it's got some decent lacing, a lot of carbonation. This kind of looks like your typical lager adjunct. Now, as y'all know, they have a very elaborate pouring ritual. Yes, I do, Jim. But, but that's usually when it, when you're pouring it off out of the draft tap, you know. Yeah. I'm not finding that you can do that. You can duplicate that that uh, intense uh, pouring style out of the bottles at all. Uh, Aren't they saying like over 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 there where they pour these? They've got like a, a glass that they pour these into, with like two lines on it or something. It's got it's supposed to have like the Two or three fingered head and all that stuff. Yeah, I on. think in between those two yeah, lines, you want this where you want the head to, to rest up, to line right. up. Oh, okay. Right. Hey, Eric, do me a favor. Eric, do me a favor. Tell uh, Patrick not to panic. Just to um, if he can't hear us or or if he can't um, let us hear him, he can type in what he's thinking about it. At least he can do that sure. until he gets his, he gets his uh, you know, technological prowess more advanced. Now, um, exactly. <laughs> No, 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 no. We don't want a video call. Oh. Somebody call. <laughs> now, uh, whoever's got that going, kill that quick. Uh, uh, Y'all do know this beer is made with an adjunct. I think, yeah, it's maize. Yes. It's corn, right? Mm, yeah, it can taste a little bit of corn in there. Yeah. Must be flaked maize, which means cornflakes. <laughs> I got a lot of sweetness in the nose. Yeah, a lot of sweetness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, y'all might want to tell Patrick. He's got some kind of camera thing going. I think he's got his, like you said, settings are wrong. Uh, oh. No, I, I, will, I will tell you, this beer advocate uh, done this beer not too bad, really. Oh, yeah, what they say? Beer advocate gives it 71, and the bros give it 72. Hmm. Oh, I roll on that one. I've been drinking this beer for probably about 10 years. Yeah. It wasn't sold around here that I can recall until around 10 years ago. I never remember seeing it in the 90s. No, no. I don't remember seeing this until just here recently, really. Within the last 10 years, I guess you'd say. So. Um, it's, yeah, um, it's an interesting uh, beer. I was going to say the BJCP guidelines list this beer under the premium American lager as an example, but according to them, the premier beers have fewer adjuncts, so it kind of caught me by surprise when you guys were saying that they definitely used adjuncts in Stella Art. Yeah, I know they use adjuncts because if you get on the um, Anheuser-Busch website that's called Tap Into Your Beer, it's uh. not it says it, but it doesn't taste like it's loaded with corn. Mm -hmm. Does it? 
I think no, also no. Um, the BJCP style guideline says that a premium American logger has up to 25%, um, while a standard has um, more than that. So I think that there's a difference in the percentage. Mm -hmm. that they use. Oh. Yeah, as a matter of fact. So I just looked at the standard, and it says up to 40% as adjunct. Um, that's not in the one I have, so that's good to know. I yeah. have a printout. I would highly recommend anybody that's drinking an Anheuser Busch in Bev beer to. I have it saved in my favorites to use the uh, Tap into Your Beer site. Right. I'll tell you why Tap into Your Beer is so good. It's got every beer they make listed. So if it's suddenly not listed, that means it's been <laughs> discontinued. Secondly, they, they list they list all the ingredients for most of the beers. They give the alcohol. They give the grams of fat, you know, uh, the calories. It's a really good website. And plus, they have a big section about styles and uh, uh, like a, a zithology section, beer study. Now, now, Jay, is that, is that just a regular uh, .com or is that within the M MBEV website itself? It's a, separate, just, it's a separate site. It's called Tap Into Your Beer. Okay. Once you get past the age gate, yeah. You don't have to re-enter the age gate when you go back to it. I go back to it every few days, and you don't have to keep entering your birth date. It just, I think it's a really good website for somebody that's learning beer, trying to get into the hobby, um, and wants to learn. And Anheuser Busch is really focused on like education. Like, not only does tap into your beer have a good section on the styles of beer and learning about how they're supposed to taste and look. If you get on the regular Anheuser-Busch website, they have an extensive book. It's an eight-chapter book that you can read for free. It's a PDF file called, um, oh, it's called Zithology. It's really good for somebody that might be getting ready to take a JC, uh, J, B -J -P. Yeah, okay. <laughs> BJCP test, it might help. Sorry. <laughs> Now, Tanya, um, you're out there in uh, the, the early evening on the West Coast. What is your opinion of this beer? Have you had it many times or not? Um, I have had it many times um, just because every time I see the name, I always want to yell Stella, and then I have to get back to like I need to buy it. <laughs> right? Stella! Yeah. So, um, I end up buying it a lot based on that, and I have a couple friends that like to drink it a lot, and I um, I think that they specifically drink it as an alternative to um, a Budweiser beer, and um, that always kind of cracks me up. Like, I try not to be really, you know, beer geeky and rude about it, but like, well, you know, me? actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Patrick, hold on. Hold on a second, Tanya, hold on. Uh, yeah. Who's saying that? Patrick? Patrick is. Yes. Hi, Patrick. We, we can, can hear you. Oh, awesome. awesome. Woo! Woo! Celebrations. All right, we're going to get back to Patrick. <laughs> we're so happy. Now, too bad for Jean, but um, I think Jean was using equipment that really wasn't um, compatible with this uh, level of... Yeah, uh, he keeps trying to do his phone. I'm just really bad at computers. Well, you figured it out. Yay. And I'm Great. sober. Yeah, but are you using a computer? Yeah, an old star. My junky old laptop, that's all. And that's better than a phone. If you try to use a phone, you can just expect trouble. Um, now, Tanya, let's go back to Tanya because she was making some interesting statements. She said her, her friends will drink this because it's a lot classier than Budweiser, but you don't give them a hard time, but what were you going to say? Because I know you're going to make a good point about it. Um, I feel like, well, the bar that I go to a lot, they serve it in the, the Stella glass. And I have it here, but it's in a Chimay glass, which is probably – you know, blasphemous, but, um, <laughs> right? Um, How but dare they, you? They always order it because, it, you know, it's it's a non-offensive beer. It's really easy to drink. It doesn't taste like like a, a junky, I don't, I don't even, I try, I'm trying not to be rude with my comment, but, like, it doesn't taste like a junky, cheap beer, um, but it's made by the same company. Um, so I think that Stella really does a good job with this beer, Um because it's drinkable. I would drink it, and I've had it. I've shared pictures with people and didn't complain about it or make any faces or anything. So you think that's excellent, and you think it fits the style? I do. I think it really fits the style. Um, I think that it's probably um, less corny and adjuncty than than a lot of the beers that are in the same category, but the commercial examples include Full Sail, um, MGD, Miller... Um, 
Michelob, Corona Extra, Coors Extra, Beer I'm Already, Heineken. Um, I don't know why they say Red Stripe. Now, I just did that. now the, the only beer that, that, that you just said that I would compare this to would be a Heineken. Yes. Yes. You, yeah, yeah, which one? A Heineken. A step Heineken. above Heineken. Yeah, I agree with you. And I when I read the, I the list definitely of... definitely a step above Heineken. Yeah, when I read the list of beers that are in the same category, like I just it doesn't it doesn't even seem to stack up. Like I would never compare this to a Corona. Um, right. Mm. Or know, a full sale. Two beers for two different purposes. So. Now, um, well, it's got to fit in some class. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. I, I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this big group, and I want to make sure we get to everybody because I always feel anytime we do these on live hangouts, I always feel like I'm cheating somebody. And I may, I might be paranoid, but that's the way I feel. Yeah, and you do a good job. I hope I do a good job. Now, um, hey, forgive me, I'm a dog up on a beer group. I hope I don't get kicked out of it. Now, um, <laughs> now, um, Patrick, you've yes. tried this before. We appreciate you joining us. You've had this before. I have actually. It's it's not something I drink often, but. It's something that I enjoy. As a matter of fact, when I was out on my birthday about a month ago, this is what I chose to go with for my birthday dinner. So it's a good go-to when I want to change it up every once in a while. Okay. And that's What's a nice your standard looking... beer? What? What's your standard go-to beer, Patrick? I'm a big Coors Banquet guy myself. Yeah. Oh, Coors, yeah. the banquet beer. Oh. Legacy <laughs> beer. I have some former friends that would physically attack you for saying that. <laughs> but I wouldn't do it. Now, um, just kidding. Well, no, maybe. I'm, but anyway, um, well, I I'm just will. They wouldn't be threatening anybody, my friends. But now, Patrick, um, <laughs> I can tell by the cap you're wearing oh. and the accent you have that you must be from Pennsylvania. What accent? <laughs> that, Pennsylvania, that Pennsylvania accent, sir. Oh, you think I have a little bit of a Philly accent thing going on? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> uh, right, yeah. I I grew up in Philadelphia, and I live right five minutes outside of. So I'm a Philly boy through and through. Yeah, these Pennsylvania people, man, I can pick that up like faster than <laughs> I can pick up an adjunct and a logger. I like Pennsylvania. I like Pennsylvania. I've been to Pennsylvania many times, and I always liked it. In uh, in Pennsylvania or in Philadelphia, the only uh, place this side of the Mississippi you can get Plinies. Uh, I thought you could only get friends of mine drink it. I do. When I've been to Philadelphia, I bought Peel's beer. I bought ooh. Schmitz. I cannot get that anywhere else. I bought... Uh, I tell you, the one beer I can't get around here is Schmitz that I've been looking for. It is not available anywhere. I was looking at, I was looking at cans of Schlitz today at Matherns in Laplace. Now, um, we're going to go down the line, of course. Uh, I like this beer. I'm going to talk for myself first and then I'm going to be quiet. I like this beer. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's certainly not terrible. <laughs> the Brister says, no doubt, my friends. Now, um, <laughs> it's it's certainly not terrible. And uh, anybody that would say it's horrible, trash, you know, I would rather drink, you know, um, industrial waste. I just, I don't understand that. I mean, <laughs> I think it tastes all right. I mean, I wouldn't. It's, it's a little overpriced, but I know they got to keep it at a high price point because they've got a certain image to project and, um, even though it might not cost that much to make, if they sold it at a lower price, they, you know, they don't want to um, low it. So I can understand the price point. But I'm cool with Stella Artois. I have no issue with it. So that's my final assessment. Cool. I think it's a well-made beer. I like it, and I could drink it every day, and I wouldn't get tired of it. But, you know, I wouldn't drink it every day, but, I mean, I could. All right, right. now we'll go. Tanya, you give us your final. I'm going to go west to east, so. Um, I actually think it's pretty good. I think I, that as far as um, lagers go, this is probably one of my favorite. Lagers really not my favorite style, but I drink this a lot with a friend of mine at the bar, and it's it's drinkable. I like it. 
Okay, and let me interrupt before I go to the next person. So Tanya likes it, Jay likes it. There is a, a beer called Stella Light. It's called Stella uh, Legere. I have never yeah, tried it, and I don't think it's sold in the United States. I've seen Lee Russell do a video of it on YouTube. I have oh, not seen it in my area. Yeah, I think it's sold to Canada. Stella Legere, that means Stella wow. Light, which means light, you know. Um, okay, now, going into the Mountain West. He did an awful nice uh, malt liquor review. <laughs> Who? Lee Russell. Oh, about Old English? Yeah, well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Please don't bring that up. Now, um, uh, we're trying to we're trying to repair things. Now, um, and wounds. Correct, and I think that's the best way to do it, my friends. Now, going into the going into the nearer west, to the inner west, or whatever you call it. The, uh, we're going to go to Wyoming. Um, what do y'all think about this beer? Beer cup. You know, I, I enjoy it, um, but I like the Euro, I like the Euro lagers. I like I enjoy Heineken, Brolsch, Stara Promen. I could drink any of those every day. I haven't tried that yet. Um, what about you? Um, I'm not a lager drinker, and there are several lagers that I'd rather just have water. But I would drink this. So, okay. I, you know, take it for what it is, because I'm not a lager drinker. But I, I, this is actually drinkable. There's a flavor in a lot of lagers. I don't know if it's the yeast or the adjuncts that it's very unpleasant to me, and I'm not getting much of that in this. So, um, but I, I don't. I still haven't figured out what that magic thing is to to pin. You no, know, I it. think it's the. I think it's what you're talking about. I think it's the yeast, the adjuncts, and the barley. This beer is probably using two row barley. They're probably using a good yeast strain, and they're not putting too much corn, and they're probably not using corn syrup. They're probably using that flaked, you know, corn chips, which is probably better. I I don't know that. I'm just saying that's probably I'm, what they're doing. I'm curious. Um, that flavor that you don't like in a lager, does it remind you of canned corn, like creamed corn? No, no. It's a smell and a flavor, and it's usually after I swallow. It's like... I drink it, and then as it goes down, there's this after that I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. it. It reminds me of what it smells like after tailgating at a college game when you go through and you smell that skunky smell of cheap oh. beer. <laughs> yeah. That's the smell of my youth. That's <laughs> <laughs> the smell of everybody's oh, youth. <laughs> yeah, man. When, when we're all finished going over this, I want to bring up something about hops. Okay, now Brandon, you're in the uh, deep south like I am in right. Mississippi. So what do you think? I'm in Louisiana tonight, and I gotta say, Stella oh, Artois. Louisiana, even better, even better. Okay. Yes, I agree. But Stella Artois, I mean, it's it's not a lot that's gonna knock your socks off. But what it, it's a very solid beer, absolutely nothing off about it. It's one of those beers you can just have. One and then have another. Nothing wrong with that. A little, price, a little too much of my taste, but at the same time, I don't, you can't go off with that beer either. So there you go. Super drinkable, huh? Yes. Like if you're just trying to drink beer and not trying to taste beer. I don't know. I like the anyway. All right. Now Jeff, you're in Mississippi, around yeah. close to the University of Mississippi, who LSU beat really bad in baseball this weekend. But anyway. Um, <laughs> And in football is here. <laughs> oh, what a game. All right, now, but that's all right. Now, um, what do you think about Stella Artois, sir? Actually, I'm really glad that we did this because this is only the second time I've had Stella Artois. The first time I had out of an extremely skunk bottle, and I said, I hate this beer. But now tonight I had it out of the, the, the cans, and it's I think it's pretty freaking good. Um, it has a little bit of an adjunct taste, but compared to other adjuncty beers, I think it's above average for sure. So you like it better than the um, the uh, uh, Steel Reserve? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh, I like it better than the Steel Reserve because the Steel Reserve is just too strong for me. Well, mm. I think that well, Steel Reserve is a different category of beer. Yeah, right. It's like you know, it's, it's ridiculous to compare them really. But, Apples um, and oranges. It's better than Coors, better than Miller, it's better than those type of beers. Yeah. I couldn't finish my steel reserves. Uh, I can name on one hand the beers I've never been able to finish in my life. Earthquake. Three of them started with the word camo. 
Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I finished the earthquake, and that was the mistake. Oh! <laughs> oh! Did you take a so with weird. the word camo? Put it in bed. I vomited. Yes, the camo, oh. the camo malt liquor series. Ooh, yeah. The only beer in my whole entire life that made me throw up. Steel Reserve, uh, uh, Earthquake High Gravity, twelve percent. Oh, that was a nightmare. Watch the video. You can see That's how I gave it a C. Yeah. I gave it a C. It did have some redeeming qualities. I mean, but it was <laughs> a nightmare. Taste it twice. It Earthquake was, is a C. What's a D? What's a D? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, all right, I need to revisit it. Anyway, um, <laughs> what? Don't even. Rem oh, that was just so bad. Now, um, we've got um, um, Bryson. What do you think about Stella Artois? Oh, this uh, Midwest, so you know the North. Yeah, uh, this beer. I've. I mean, I've had it maybe ten, fifteen, twenty times. And it's it's something I've always kind of associated uh, that just the taste of this really does have a bit of a finesse to it, almost a little bit of a delicateness that a lot of other beers don't seem to have. Maybe that's just the advertisement kind of projecting onto me a little bit. But this is a really, I mean, the beer itself is arguably pretty good. I mean, it does stand up to a lot of the Euro import kind of uh, lagers and pilsners, that kind of stuff. Um, but the other thing that kind of surrounds the beer that I thought was interesting was I've heard this uh, stereotype, and I don't know if you guys have heard it before, but a lot of women drink this beer. Uh, like, it, a lot of women are attracted to this beer. I don't know if you guys have heard that stereotype before. Uh -uh. Well, but it's something I've, I, I've heard up here in Minnesota, like a lot of women like this beer and for men, I guess. I have never heard that, but, I mean, I would believe it, but I just... I think I the name that. has something to do with it. And, and I don't know if that's part of their advertisement or if they're trying right. to get to that demographic. Or, But I've always heard that up here in Minnesota. It's kind of, there's always been an inclination for women to kind of uh, be drawn towards over men. It wouldn't shock me, but um, I, I, I just, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, no. So you like yeah, definitely. It's a solid, a solid beer. I mean, I usually don't drink it very often, but when I do, it's pretty good. So, yeah. Excellent. Now, um, now we're going up to the Midwest, the Middle North, or whatever you call it, Indiana, the Old Northwest. That's what we call it, the Old Northwest. Old, old Northwestern Territory, Indiana. To John, and what do you think about it? John. <laughs> John looks like a frozen statue. Well said, John. Oh, uh, bye, John. He'll be back. Now, um, okay, fine. So we'll go to Penn's Woods. We'll go to the state that was founded by William Penn, a state that oh, at one point, going now. a state at one time that practiced tolerance of all walks of life. That one time. And Patrick, what do you think about Stella Artois? I like Stella Artois. I, but I'm, an, I'm a lager guy, and I don't make any, you know, uh, I don't make any bones about it. I like it. I think it's a, it's a good beer. It's a well-made beer. It's always the same every time I have it. Uh, it to me, it kind of reminds me of Heineken's like lesser-known cousin, but. When I have it, I always like it, so I think it's it's definitely a, a well-made beer. Yeah, I like what you said, Heineken's little lesser-known cousin. And I don't want to get into this big Heineken versus Stella Artois debate oh. because uh, oh, no. because I, I like them both, you know, really. But um, I do too. I just think they're similar in taste. They they mm -hmm. both leave a, an aftertaste when I drink them. It reminds I, me one of the other. I find Heineken has a little more grassy hops thing yeah. going, but um. I agree. Now, Jeff Brister, you are a character. Now, um, <laughs> Zoom, I have no control over. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's working. Uh, 
You're just drinking too much. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a booze cruise. Now we proceed to the northeast to two Boston area people who like to drink rather large quantities of beer in a year. Happy um, Patrick's Day tomorrow. Woo! Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> a day. First, Adam and Irishman. First, we're going we're to look at Nate K. Nate K, what do you think about Stella Artois, sir? I, I think it's got, you know, I, I've heard all of what you guys have to say about it, and I, I think the fact that it has that light kind of adjuncty taste to it, that it kind of, it, it has, it doesn't lose the appeal of people who kind of, like, appreciate, um, you know, m different types of craft beers, but it also maintains um, a certain familiarity with people who are, really are, are seeking that adjunct flavor of, you know, say a Budweiser or some something like that. So it's like it has memories of home, but it brings you to a little bit higher level. Yeah, if you had to go, if you're going out to the bar with, you know, your friends and not necessarily your beer friends, um, you can all get this and probably be happy with it. So most I think Budweiser it's a beer that if you drink regular beer, you're, it's not too far outside of your realm of comfort where if you have it, it's not like, wow, this is something I'm not used to. It's not something I like ordinarily. It's something that, hey, it's different, but I can enjoy it because it's not what I usually my go-to. So a beer, like your Coors Light drink or your Bud Light drinker or your Bud Budweiser drinker, there's still about, you know, 25 million of them left. Um, they could drink this and it wouldn't scare them off. Absolutely. Good point. Good point. Okay, Eric. Who I was very concerned Eric wouldn't get on here tonight, but he made it. Eric. Oh, I'm on. I'm on the. Um, I'm on the second bottle because the first one. If if anybody was in this video reading the chat section, um, I popped open the first <laughs> bottle and it smelled like the skunkiest beer that I've ever smelled. And my favorite, one of my favorite lager beers. Of all time is the green bottle Carlsberg, and I never had a smoky version of Carlsberg, but this had a very, this like a very sweet sort of a soury, corny smell. And I opened up the second bottle, and it's much better. It's almost like, in a way, it's almost like a, like a Miller High Life, and I think people are mentioning some kind of like a class or sophistication involved with this beer. It's almost like a Miller High Life, but it's got like a like a lightness, it's got a crispness. The body is almost like a champagne sort of a quality. It's very, very light yeah. on that, um, on the maize, on the corn. But it also has, which I like about the Euro Pear Lagers, they all have this nice biscuity kind of a malt. They have a light, spicy kind of a hot presence, and it just seems like they have a little bit more character to them than the other beers in America. But this one to me is even more like the champagne of beers than Miller High Life. I recommend this one. I give it an A. Mine Excellent. has great lacing, too. Oh, yeah. My glass is just oh, yeah. Yeah. from top to bottom. And, now, it, doesn't, and, and it doesn't matter that, that Anders of Bush and InBev own this beer. It seems like they're pretty much, to me, the taste is pretty good quality. It seems like they left Stella alone to do their own thing and to produce it the way that they see fit, and it seems like it's been working pretty good. Yeah, it look, look like Paul. I think that's a good thing in some ways. It means that the big company is going to make sure that their quality control stays good. They're not going to let them get off track because money's not going to be an issue. They're going to have the cash they need to do the science and everything else to make sure that every thing you get from them is going to be consistent. Right, like Paul Paul Obear, who probably couldn't join us tonight because he got to put those babies to bed, but um. He said this two weeks ago or a week ago. He said, why would a major company buy a beer brand and then ruin it so nobody would want to drink it? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's bad right. business. You have a popular brand of beer like a Goose Island, so you buy it. And then what do you do? You intentionally make it bad so people don't buy it anymore? That doesn't make sense. Now, I have only had Goose Island since 2011, uh, 2013 after the buyout. But to me, the Goose Island beers taste really good, so um, I don't think they mess with it. Of course, I cannot really say because I never had it before the buyout, but to me, it tastes really good. It seems like really high-quality stuff. Same thing with Bass and a whole lot of other stuff that InBev bought. But anyway. Absolutely. 
Um, uh, John, Sharon. Looks like Tanya got booted out. I guess her thing, her thing failed. Uh, whatever. But um, no, nope, uh, no, nope, John. Yeah, that's a mystery to me. Hmm. Like Fleetwood Mac, a mystery to me. But uh, <laughs> it was one of their albums. Oh, here comes John. Oh, here comes John. We get John. John. Hello, everybody. I finally got on. Hey. John, are you going to be here right now? John, you were I'm really doing good. Well, well, I've had a few already, so, uh, but now no. I got my bottle. That's Stella. Good. That's good. <laughs> we need your thoughts, opinions, and um, overall, you know, thoughts of this beer. Let's go. Now, John, you still, well, John, you're echo we're still echoing, so you're just going to have to talk, and we'll shut up. John's lit up, so tell us what you think about this beer in your lit up state. Yes, um, it's a not bad beer. I like this. Uh, I would buy this. Uh, I heard a little bit of what Eric just said. It's kind of a little bit like Miller uh, uh, High Life. I think this is a little better. I give this uh, an A+. Plus. It's a very good beer. I enjoy it with uh, anything spicy, Asian food, you know, Chinese, you know, whatever it is. I think it's a very good beer, very well balanced. It only at five percent. You know, you can't go wrong with this. Yes, the cost is a little bit high. I think here for a six pack is about what nine ninety nine or some places ten ninety nine. But to me, it's worth the money. It's it's a very good beer and. I think this is uh, uh, InBev's what signature beer before since the merger with uh, Anheuser Busch, but uh, they got a winner with this. I, I've always enjoyed this beer a lot. So that was a fantastic summary and well said in every way. Like Amen, John. Now, all right. Now we've closed it out. I think everybody agreed that they liked it. Um, you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it doesn't claim to be. Um, but now we're about to get real. We're about to get serious. Y'all ready to get serious and real? Oh, yeah. Real talk? Real talk. Because I'm tired of playing games. <laughs> next, all right, I'm going to lay it down for you. I'm going to lay it down for you. Because next Wednesday night, what you know about that? Magnum malt liquor, what you know about that? No oh, shit. I mean, I didn't say that word. <laughs> Damn! Next Wednesday night, we're about to get serious. You heard me. So, um, I know, you know, you know the champagne of malt liquors. <laughs> um, now, that's how they say it down in Philly, yo. I didn't say we're about to get gourmet, <laughs> and I didn't say we're about to get good. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I didn't even say we're about to get quality. I just said we're about to get serious and keep it keep it real. Um. Because malt liquor is not about quality or appreciating the subtle nuances between the hops and the malt. I can't even do this. It's about living a, Gregory. a marginal existence. But anyway, <laughs> that movie in the hood. You got to drink some for your homies, son. Yeah, that's right. Pour one now, out. So we're going to, in all seriousness, <laughs> we're going to look. We're going to look at Magnum Malt Liquor, introduced in 1981 by Miller Brewing Company. And even though, you know, we'll joke about it and say snide things and be, you know, mostly serious, it'll be a fun examination, I think. My only concern is that a lot of people can't get it. I can't get it. Uh, I can barely get it, but uh, I did get a 40-ounce bottle, so luckily I've got one ready to roll. Um, I work in North Philadelphia. I'll be able to find it. Okay. And Brandon, can, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon cruises around Baton Rouge a lot, and it, Baton Rouge is like the most magnum right. town in America, right? That magnum town in America, right? Brandon, Brandon Burrell, Brandon. Oh, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon. Yeah. Matt, yeah. Baton Rouge, Louisiana is about the most magnum town in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in America, huh? Yeah. Magnum town in America, huh? Well, again, I told Brandon, thank you for the Magnums. I can't wait to try them when, when I, I gave him my address to ship them to me, and I can't wait to try them. So, Yeah, you're going to like it, I think, but don't expect a whole lot. I hope so. 
Okay. And, and what's the ABV on Magnums? 5.6. 5.6, okay. It used I, guess, to be I guess about the same ABV as, as uh, Mickey's, I guess. About the same. Let me give y'all a, yeah, little, uh, a little, uh, John, 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 I'm going to have to mute you because you're echoing the, echoing the fool out of me. Okay. Let me go to another location. Go to this yeah, den here. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the dark. I don't think it's your location so much. <laughs> Traveling drinkers. Uh, 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 I consider myself, myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give y'all a little homework. I'm going to give you a little homework project. Go on to the Miller Coors website and look at the spec specifications for Magnum Malt Liquor and then compare them to the specifications of Mickey's and you're going to find something out very interesting. But like uh, I believe it was um, uh, John Walker who did not join us tonight. Last week he said I think it's the how they age the beer that makes it different. Like he said he said the silver can still reserved tastes different from the black can. Oh, yeah. Thanks, they age oh. differently. And I said, I, I never have a question, thought though. I never thought of that. Hmm. Okay, question. After everybody gets off here tonight and you're done your Stella, what are you going to go drink after this? Hot tea. Oh. I'm, um. not big, I'm not a big drinker, no matter what some people say. I don't. I don't really drink a lot. I drank a brown ale from Belgium this afternoon, and I drank this uh, Stella Artois can tonight, and that's it. That's it until tomorrow morning. I, Stella, morning. I'm enjoy it probably. I do have a 10% alcohol beer to drink tomorrow morning at 6.40 at the store. But breakfast of champions. Breakfast of, <laughs> breakfast of champions right there. You know I have to do those store uh, reviews very early for the customers arrive. Patrick. I'm going to probably pop open a Maui coconut porter when we're done here, so that would be what I'll be doing. Yeah. That sounds that. insanely good. Who just flashed that Dixie beer? I did. <laughs> oh, you little rascal. Now, um, <laughs> I would love to examine Dixie, but it would be about three people on the panel. Um, well, we could do one, just you and me, something like that. Oh, yeah. What about Dixie? Yeah. I'll be seriously down for that. Now, and not to mention black and voodoo. Now, um, well, my I have nothing else to say. Any other final thoughts? Uh, chicken and the biscuits, good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, it, is like there really of, any chicken in that at all in the list of ingredients? No chicken is in the making of chicken and the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Whisker biscuit is better. Okay, well, we better close it out because now the alcohol's kicking in and the people are getting silly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, folks, for watching this fantastic <clears throat> video production. Out <laughs> Outstanding is <laughs> Dave Cole. Thanks, everybody. Beautiful. Get the thumbs us down, right? Yeah, woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the host goes offline. It stays live for a while if in case he comes back, but he's not really. It's not really live. Right? Oh, okay. We'll do it live. We'll boop. It's just technical difficulties. Do it live. Fuck. Still alive. We'll do it live. Still alive. I still think it's live. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Obscure. Bill O'Reilly reference. Bill O'Reilly reference. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. Now you go to the YouTube page and it proves what I say. But anyway, uh, yeah, Jeff, I can get you. Uh, did you some Magnum? Come back to right. Mississippi on um, this coming Sunday. So uh, there, you go. there you go. Nice, nice. Hello again. What, what, what size variety? Variety. Well, Everything was good. I just wish I I wish I could have done this video with you guys, but again, it's just a crappy phone. Well, any phone would have had the same issue, I think. With Pretty much. With Ron.
Pretty much, pretty much. So, but it's it's a good beer. It's it's a really good beer. I think again, uh, Mbev has a good one on its hands. So. All right. Well. All right. Um, so Brandon, again, thank you for the magnums, uh, uh, Brandon. I appreciate it. Forms of wings. Okay, bye, Brister. Everybody's leaving. Okay, bye, Brister. Yep. See you guys. See you guys. Face. Face. All right, later. Yes. Yeah, the first bottle I had was completely skunked. And that was not pleasant at all. But this one's not too bad. Everybody's 